Hi, it's me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks. If somebody wants to engrave this logo on a mug, and I don't know all the details. Well, I didn't read the entire email. I'm real bad about that. But you'd have to do some testing because the color variation. And the inside would be very easy. You just need to find that font. So I might try to break this into two videos, but we're gonna, if you'll notice that the, it's a repeated, of sh repeated shape, and I'm not gonna take a lot of time to do it, you know, perfect, but I'm gonna get right there on that line. I'm gonna draw a line to the top of that. I'm gonna click my mouse and just continue. Then I'm gonna get on that node, and while I'm doing it, just drawing a, a box but with a, with a pointed top. And if I was doing this for real, I would take a little bit more time and zoom in, but I'm just going from node to node, which makes sure the lines are connected. And I'm gonna keep talking, but trying to concentrate on doing this. And I'm a little bit off on that one, but like I'm saying, you would take your time on this. And these aren't perfect. Uh, which is kind of neat. And I'm a little bit high on that one, but we could fix it in just a second. And I only have to do to this side of this one. Now we could actually take our shape tool and correct some of these, but like I said, it, it's not really, uh, you don't have to do it perfectly for the video. And I'm gonna call that good enough. You want to make sure all your lines are uh, touching your circle. And then I'm going to grab, I'm going to turn my nudge factor and nudge this out of the way. And all we have is a dark and a light line. I'm going to go ahead and put a rectangle around in case I have a leak. I don't think I do, but I always do that. And then I'm going to take the smart fill tool. I'm going to get a dark color and I'm going to fill in every other one. And then I'm going to get a light color. And that's where you have to do some tests. You almost would maybe want to use a white. I'm going to use a light gray in this test. Now there are, see, I've got a little leak. That's why I do the rectangle. And my leak is right there. I can see it. So just grab your shape tool and go to that node. Then get back to your smart fill tool. Still got a leak. Might be on the bottom. No, I think we're good. Tell you what, let me back up and take away, let me take away that black feel. I don't have the black back up. You can see the, the feel was kind of showing me that I was connected and I wasn't connected. So we'll take the smart fill tool and fill that in with gray and then change back to black. Now, if you look at this, there are 10 of them. And 10 into 360 is 30, 36 degrees. Let's get rid of our rectangle. And I'm going to select this. And I'm going to, matter of fact, at first, I'm going to get rid of my outline by right clicking. Then I'm going to control G and group it together. Then I'm going to bring in some indexing lines and hit P. Because I want to know where the center is of this circle. I'm going to grab my item. And I'm going to control D and I'm going to make a duplicate. And I'm going to double click on it, get my rotation. I'm going to put it to the center. It might not be in the center, but you need, and a lot of times I'll move away and come back. Now, this time it is in the center. I'm going to rotate it 36 degrees. I'm going to visually look and we're, I did pretty good. Now we need to control D and make it 72 degrees. And just go all the way around you're meeting this one will be the most important one. And I'm really close. But since we don't have an outline, you can just take your shape tool. Well, need to ungroup it. Go to object, group and ungroup. Take your shape tool and just bring that one down to where it meets. I evidently have another copy there. Well, you know what? I have the, the uh, outline color and I'm not real precise on that. 
bad is probably not even needed because that's an outline. I shouldn't really have an outline, but that's probably the hardest part. It is not very hard. So I'm going to take my line out of the way for a second, and I'm going to right-click no, no outline, and I'm going to group this together. Now, this is where you'd have to test whether you're going to have, um, if that light and dark will work on your cut material. You know, if you're using like Enduramark, uh, it might just engrave all the same. You know, uh, I don't know. I don't do that much, cut, that many cut. Now, if you're doing this on a piece of wood or another flat item, you could... Uh, run it twice and run the black separately from the grays. Now we need to bring our picture back in. And this is why I draw in the center of the page. Now I'm gonna bring my line back in. And I'm gonna zoom in. And my line's right at the top of that line. So I'm gonna control D and make a duplicate. And then I'm gonna bring in that line holding down the shift key I made a double line. Control D and make a duplicate. Bring this in, holding down the shift key. I'm a little bit off. Holding up, you know, if you hold down the shift key, it grows from the inside out. Control D and see that time. And that's one reason you don't want to use the control all the time. So I think we're good to go there. Now we'll take our picture, which might be hard to grab. So I'm going to grab our picture and, put, and then put this back. Matter of fact, I'm gonna keep that out of the way for a second. Now, if you'll stay tuned to part two, I'm gonna text the path this and the star and, and try to figure out more about it. I hope that helped, thank you for watching.